Hello people, today that we're looking at the Raspberry Pi mini computer from the Raspberry Pi Foundation in Cambridge, England. This is the Raspberry Pi computer. It uses the Broadcom BCM Bravo Jally Mic 2835 uh, processor, which is here, um, in the middle of the board. When the camera wants to focus, there we go. Underneath that there's some RAM as well, or actually it could be the processor is actually underneath the RAM, which is the chip you see there. Um, this is the Model B, the 512 megabytes version. Um, it's an amazing bit of kit. It's a whole uh, Linux computer in a board, which is, uh, let me give you some reference of scale. It's no bigger than, well, it's just slightly bigger than the credit card. So a two-pence piece there. You can see how big it is compared to the two-pence piece. And you can see you've got uh, audio output, uh, you've got composite video output, you've got GPIOs here, SD card slot. Um, I think that's the camera connector, or the um, it could be the uh, that could be the LCD connector. There's an interface for a camera, which is a camera module you buy separately, and an LCD interface, which is fantastic. It's powered off uh, micro USB, as you can see here. So a standard phone charger or iPhone charger, etc., or a USB port with high current output will power that. It, ne it needs at least 700 milliamps at 5 volts DC. Um, so yeah, you got the. Also, you got two USB two ports here. You've got Ethernet jack here. You got HD HDMI output. So you can have an old style TV connected to the. Uh, Composite or HDMI to a monitor or TV. Underneath, on the flip side, as they say, you have a 16 gig SD card in the SD card slot. Doesn't have to be 16 gig. That's what I was using. I'm using a high performance uh, card. That's the underneath of the board. It's absolutely tiny. It's minuscule. I mean, well, it's not micro, but it's pretty small. I mean, yeah, there's a two pence piece. You can see how big it is compared to that. It's very very light. So in this this was thirty pounds, thirty one pounds I think. But you pay on average thirty pounds for this, which is amazing. Um, the name Raspberry Pi is uh, is a nod to the programming language Python, and uh, they call it Raspberry Pi because apparently every computer company needs a needs a fruit name. I'm not quite sure if Raspberry fits. I would have called it Cherry Pi, but hey, that's my opinion. Cherry Pi just sounds better. Uh, one thing I'm very proud of is the fact that it is made in the UK. You can see that it says made in the UK. This is made in the Sony manufacturing plant in Wales, where they usually make cameras and stuff, digital uh, broadcast cameras. This is made in Wales. The Broadcom chip is um, a chip which was procured by Eben Upton, the founder of uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and that uh, the Broadcom department he works in is also based in Cambridge. Of course, ARM, which the chip architecture is based upon, is a spin-off of Sinclair Research Machines. Um, so ARM was Acorn Research Machines. Sorry, Sinclair Radionics, it was a spin-off from, um, which was Sir Clive Sinclair's company in the 80s. So this is a Cambridge-based, UK-based device. I'm very, very proud because I'm from Cambridge myself. I don't live in Cambridge now, but I was born in Cambridge and my dad went to university in Cambridge, so... It's a very, very proud moment to see a board, a computer, that was designed in Cambridge and manufactured in Wales. So um, this device is, has, been, uh, re, has been released to encourage schools and young children to learn how to program again, how they used to on the BBC Micro, when the BBC did its micro pro, microcomputer uh, program on TV called the Computer Program in 1982. This board is designed to encourage young children and anyone else to learn how to hack and how to write uh, software which isn't dummy GUI based software. Um, this basically, they encourage, encourage you to learn Python. And by learning Python, you can control the GPIO pins here. These are not all GPIOs, there's a few of them that aren't. Um, you can actually set the state on or off and do various other neat. Uh, clever little uh, tricks with them and if I turn the camera around you can see the logo excuse me Raspberry Pi
copyright 2011 2012. Turn the camera around again. So this is connected to a monitor, which I have here, and that is the standard uh, bash prompt in Linux. It's running a, a distribution called Raspbian, R A S P B I A N, which is a mixture of Raspberry and Debian. Um, as soon as you connect the micro USB, the white lead here, the device turns on. There's no power switch to speak of, so you have to turn it off by literally um, pulling the power out, which is a bit clunky if you ask me, but hey, what do I know? I didn't design it. At least they designed it, hey? So, if I just type in my login, my password, I can now do reboot. If I reboot this, you will see what happens when it first starts up. It's just going through its reboot process now, preparing for restart. You'll see on the screen, it will say, you get the rainbow effect, and you will say, for recovery mode, hold shift. Have you, caught, have you caught that? So it's now booting into Raspbian, which is a Debian Linux distribution, which I've set it as default on the memory card. So yeah, this is a Raspberry Pi. So many things can be done with it. Um, in a minute I'm going to show you a basic Python program. Hopefully, if I get around to doing it. Um, but yeah, that's a Raspberry Pi. Uh, like I said, I've got a keyboard attached to it via a... Uh, via a PS2 to USB adapter, standard uh, PC keyboard, there we go, and a mouse I've got connected via the bottom USB, which goes all the way up there, and there's my mouse there, a very worn out Belkin mouse. Um, I've also got a case for it, which I bought for £6 off eBay, which is quite nice. Not the best case I've ever seen, but it's nice, bright green. So what you do, you basically, it's very simple. You take the lid off, get your Raspberry Pi, and put it in the right way around. Seat it. You should do this with the machine off, preferably, but I'm doing it with it on. I'm being careful. And then you put the lid on, which has got light pipes. Which these little light pipes are like fiber optic um, when it focuses. These little, the end of these little plastic things, um, show you, the, end, the ends of these things here will touch against these LEDs here, which are status LEDs, which will then allow you to see the status LEDs on the outside of the case, which is pretty cool. Let's so connect it on. There we go, you can now see the, if I cover the flash up, you can, oops, excuse me, my fat fingers. Anyway, let me try that again. No, the light wants to stay on. So there's your status LEDs. We've got at, at power, FDX, whatever that is, link, and 100. So that's a Raspberry Pi case from eBay. And you get some screws with it. So you can uh, put, it, put it together. Because I'm a hacker, I don't leave I the screws out because I'm always taking it apart to try different things. So anyway, that's the Raspberry Pi. That's the login prompt. Let me show you the desktop. Login. Now I do, I'm logged in now. I now type start X to start the X server, which is the window manager. It's now going to sign in. Sorry, it's now going to start the server. I've put a custom desktop on this uh, on this uh, distribution because I didn't like the logo it came with. There we go. You've got your Python editor there uh, called Idle3. Double click that. It will launch in a second. And you'll be able to write some Python scripts to 
control the GPIO pins, etc., and do other stuff. So basically, it's a full Linux computer on a tiny little board. As big as that. I mean, that's amazing, really, seriously. For £30, kids are going to love this for programming. So, lots of respect to Eben Upton and the Raspberry Pi Foundation. What a wonderful device. God bless you guys, thanks very much. Uh, more coming soon, once I get round to it. Cheers, bye-bye.